Happy day, everyone. Welcome once again to yet another edition of today's talk with Marty G. It is the unpodcast for everything that relates to you, your friends and family. But this month, of course, I am celebrating women in business because it's Women's History Month. And I have a woman and a friend that I'd like to celebrate and introduce you to. This is Ivy Dreyer Goldman. Hello, Ivy. How are you today? Good afternoon. I'm fabulous because I'm with you. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks so much for taking the time to be on with me today. I know you've got so Thanks, much to Andy. share, and we talk a lot anyway, so it's really good we're already friends, so that helps a ton. But realistically, I'd love to hear about your new venture. Tell me about what your business is called, and tell me what you do. Yes, I have launched a new company. And the reason why I did it is because I have semi-retired from 28 years within the healthcare industry, 20 of them as an executive with Fortune 50s, and it is called IDG, Executive Advisors and Career Strategist. And I am super excited about it. I help executives and professionals advance in their careers, increase their compensation, and improve their quality of life. Okay. That's my focus. That's a pretty that's a pretty straightforward focus. Tell me, how long have you been doing it now? I've been working with folks for a couple of years, and I've really niched down the last couple of months here. As I've had more and more people come to me and ask for assistance, and I think that's in part because of the company that we own, a computer services IT company. And I've been out in the community and actually through Zoom, been more into the community and a broader community, right? right? Through Zo Zoom, because our tentacles are actually out further. Go further more and more they? people have gotten to know me, found out about my background, and I've had people asking for assistance. So yeah. it just sort of grew, it incubated, and uh, I've, I've just literally had people, you know, yep, scream at me, you've got to do this. You've got to help other people. True story. Well, and the lucky thing about that is you've got the skill set to actually be able to fill in the blanks. You know, I always worry that if someone was going to ask somebody a question that mentions that they have a skill set, that they might send them down the wrong road, right? That, yeah. That sometimes is dangerous. So yeah. tell me, what are some of the things that you like to offer? Tell me some of the things that you offer. Or you don't want to offer things that you don't, you, you can't, you can't, right, really step up and give people the information on. And I think we kind of feel like we see that a lot. People saying, well, I can give you assistance on this and that. And you wonder, at least I do, I think, well, I'm, one, I'm wondering how you can do that. So I, I want someone that can help me because they can draw upon experience that they've had. I like a blend of, of be, someone who's been taught and educated and also had real world experience. For me, that's what I like. So um, yeah, so I just, I offer people help on a one-to-one -one basis. Today, I think we want to talk a little bit, I'm thinking about executive presence, because that's something that comes up a lot, especially with emerging executives. Okay. And that is really about how you show up. You know, it's how you show up every day in the office, because how you are viewed, whether we like that or not, whether it's on Zoom these days because of COVID or whether it's in person with or without masks when we have them, depending on what the times are, right. is how you're perceived. And what's said about you when you aren't in the room dictates your career, right? What's said about you when you're not in the room is what dictates your career. Tell me a little bit more about that, because what do you think? I mean, I, I always think someone's got something to say about me when I leave a room. Sometimes <laughs> yeah. when I'm in the room, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think that, you know, there, there's just so many components. And of course, we want to be authentic, right? Right. We want to be authentic. But I think about the first, uh, lately I've been thinking about this, and I don't know why it's come to mind, but one of my first interviews that I had for an internship, I remember... I went in and there were two women, they were executives and it was, I don't I think it was when I was getting my master's degree in social work, it was industrial social work. So that's like a blend between uh, employee assistance work and social work. And so I went in to talk to them and I was leaning on the table and I kept moving. And I, I remember the woman, the woman was like looking at me and, 
And I was sort of leaning over and hunching and moving around and I didn't get the internship. And I remember thinking to myself later, why was I doing that? And, and of course I was stressed out. I was nervous, right? So I was fidgeting, I was moving around and putting my hands on the table, you know, and I never did it again. And as I moved through my career, I started doing negotiations. I was in healthcare contracting. So I did mm -hmm. big multi-million dollar negotiations and I was sent to training and negotiations. And I learned a lot about body language and that gets to comportment and how we sit and how we move, how we cross, you know, crossing your legs and keeping your body still and how you communicate, you look at people. Um, and all of that says a tremendous amount about who you are and really the level of power you have, quite frankly. So, you know, you've, you've seen people, Marty, in meetings are like nodding off. Yeah. Right? All the time. I love catching people time. nodding off. Right? Or what about this one? Can you see me here? Hold on a second. Let me, let me what stop What about sharing. this one? The person in the meeting? You're having Oh, yeah. Meeting? The sloucher. <laughs> How's that one for you? <laughs> Or then there's this one. Then there's this is the power grabber. Oh yeah. Right. I'm gonna, <laughs> I own all of you people. I own you. <laughs> I own you all. Right. There's this one. And then there's this one. I, I'm guilty of this. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. I'm really guilty of that. I'll catch myself yeah. doing that. Excuse me, quite a bit. The questioning. I have to watch that. Like, Question. are you for real? What are you, what are you saying? Do I really believe what you I mean? I don't really know. Right? Don't know if I trust you. Don't know if I trust you. Because I'm, right? So we really want to, we really want to make sure that we're sitting up and we're present. Our shoulders are forward. Right? Especially, right? right? Our shoulders are forward. We're sitting up straight and our hands are crossed in our lap. Donna, do you feel like I'm showing up for you right now? I think you are. Do you feel it? Hey, Marty, what's up? Hi, Ivy. I'm glad to have you. Super excited <laughs> to see you. Absolutely. But you're always like that when we talk, though. But, but it, and what I feel when I sit like this is I feel myself rise up. Mm -hmm. And that may sound trite or silly or stupid, but, it, but it's true. I feel oh, myself yeah. rise up. Not, I think I totally agree. I mean, just from the time that I've spent when I, when I have worked in the TV industry, yeah. posture, how you present yourself, how you sit, how you, you know, all the things, the body language is a huge portion of the conversation itself. And even as you're interviewing, you're talking to someone, because for me, just as you're saying, I can't sit like this as I'm interviewing someone. You know? Right. <laughs> so tell me anything you want to talk to me about, because they're not going to engage me because I'm not sitting up. I'm not, I don't feel like I'm engaging them. Right. Right. And I've got to lean forward a little bit as this, I'm trying to Engage right. them. I'm interested. I've got to have a smile on my face of some sort. I can't be like looking off into space going, really? Right. Okay. Mm. Exactly. You know, there's also, if you've ever watched anybody interviewing and some, and somebody else on television, it's really funny because you'll see them and they're nodding. They're always, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's on purpose because they're right. looking for that perfect sound bite. They're trying to get them to continue. And you always be able to tell them, cut them off mid-sentence and say, okay, don't talk about that anymore. They'll just ask another question or, as we were saying earlier, a redirect to kind of bring it back right. just in case, right? right? So I think what you're saying has a lot of credo to it, absolutely. Yeah, and I think that um, people that have advanced in their careers – and our executives either know this or they're just innately good at it because it's really, really critical right. that, that we are, that we're showing up in our body and we're showing up with our total presence. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely critical. I had, I was telling someone recently, I had an interesting situation. I worked for uh, a health plan when I was in my thirties. I was, it was my first manager. I was manager of provider relations for a health plan. In your thirties. So what, like last year? Yeah, no, of course. Yeah, for sure. Okay. <laughs> and that for sure. And um, I, we had a CEO and um, she was, I, I, I think she was quite stressed and she would do things like come to work with very weird hair because she'd cut it in the middle of the night. So she was a little stressed. So she used to yell at me. And when I say yell, it was sort of, it, you know, I think there was a little bit more tolerated back then 
than there is now, you know, but these things still happen, right? So she would literally scream at me and, and I don't, why, why wasn't this done right? You know, what were you thinking? This looks ridiculous. You know, you should have had these printed, this printing's not right on this, yada, yada. So I was really stressed. And as I mentioned earlier, I went to school and got a master's degree in an area of employee assistance. So I used our employee assistance program at work. Okay, a lot of people have them. We got five free sessions. So I called him up, true story. I got, actually was living in California and I went to a psychologist in Beverly Hills. Just as an aside, Roseanne Barr, for people that remember who she was, was in the oh, waiting yeah. room. Okay, it's so, so random. I know. <laughs> I like, Hi, how are you? That was kind of, kind of cool. Anyway, I met with the psychologist and she said, okay, this is what I want you to do. When you see her in the hallway or in a meeting, say to her what you want her to hear. You will treat me with, Diane, that was her name. Mm -hmm. You will treat me with dignity and respect. So Marty, I'm gonna look at you right now. Yes. That's what I would say inside myself. It's I did dialogue. this, I went back, I reported to her, and it worked. Hmm. She changed the way she behaved. I thought this was the most ridiculous thing I had ever heard. I did not understand why that would work. And I can tell you emphatically, it's anecdotal, but it absolutely worked. And I have told so many people about that technique and suggested that if they want to deploy that technique, they may want to try it themselves because it has continually worked for me in many, many situations, including negotiations or working with other executives or my bosses. And, you know, some people say, it sounds very woo-woo, but they'll look at people and say, the boss within me bows to the boss within you, to themselves. Right. So I may, I may look at you as we start our meeting today and silently say, How calming is that? Grounding. Do I send a message to you? If 75% of our body, of 75% of our communication is body language, maybe that sends a pretty strong message to you about my alliance with you. What about the, the potential of somebody misreading that though? It's like, okay, awkward silence. If they're one of those fidgety people that has that can't stand dead air. I mean, those, those kind of people are, are out there. You, I think that's you, a great that? question. I think you have to really do it in the timing. You okay. have to really you have to watch the timing. Absolutely. So I think it would be really weird if you just sat here and did that. But I think you could do it at the beginning if you said, Hi, Ivy, how are you? And I'd say, Hey, Marty, how are you? God within me bows to the God within you, or whatever you want to say. Mm -hmm. But you say it after that quietly to yourself. So it'd be kind of timing on it, you know, or we're going to have a great meeting today. Whatever. People can fool around with it and try it and see if it works for them. Great tip. It's a really yeah. good tip. Right. So aside from the, the um, I would say the, the free advice people were trying to get from you before you became a coach, <laughs> <laughs> that took you this direction, your love for helping people. Um, how has the experience been so far? Any, any, any main challenges with it? I think it's... Um, you know, you want to make sure that you're giving people helpful information, you know, that meets their needs. There's so much information out there. Uh, but most people have the information within themselves. I 100% really, agree. Yeah, it's really having someone to listen to and to ask the right questions. You know, I'm, I'm, as we've discussed, I'm finishing my certification in executive coaching. I'm going for a board certification, which, you know, you can get if you have a master's or above. Mm -hmm. um, there's an organization that does board certification. And it's all about asking the right question. Like, we're always looking for the million dollar question. You know, what would it look like if you could do this differently? Or, you know, in a perfect world, you know, so how, 
could you change this to do that? It's all about asking you the questions about how you can do it or mm -hmm. what you, how you can um, bring yourself resources that are there that you already have. Do you know what I'm saying? Pull, I do. Pull, pull in resources I do. that you already have. I do. I think that, and what, what you just said is the, uh, the delineation. I always try to, Ooh, I used a special word today. Delineation. I, I like that, that word. word. It's the delineation I try to draw all the time between coaching and counseling. I try to tell people, you know, the difference in a coach and a counselor, the coach knows you have the skill set. They know it's in there. They know you have the ability. They're just holding you accountable to just using what you got. It's right. in there. You just have to just bring it out and then, you may be afraid to bring it out or you may have brought it out once and it didn't work. So you put it back away, which made no sense at all. It's just a matter of continually bringing it out and growing it. Right. Like you say a lot of people have these things inside of them. I definitely agree with that. Whereas a counselor is more like, let's talk about how that feels. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And I think my specialty is really that I can help people package what they have. You know, I have some unique um, almost proprietary um, tactics to help people advance their careers and, and um, techniques that they can deploy. So I'm really about, my niche is helping people advance their careers and increase their compensation, as I've mentioned, and also pull back so that they can enjoy their life more. I, I spent a lot of my career working a lot of hours and I was given help from a lot of people around not doing that as much. So I have some techniques for um, sort of pulling the nose of the plane up and, and not putting in so many hours. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm gonna put you on the spot now. Tell me about that burning desire, that burning goal that you have. <laughs> okay, my burning goal. I love it. Yeah. As I read it and I'm like, oh, I gotta hear more oh, about do? it. Oh yeah. I don't know. It sounds, yeah. So I would really like to build a house. We'd like to okay. build, my partner and I would like to build a house. Yes, we would. Build it from but both of you. Mean, like, you, you two want to be like in it, building it, or are you talking about have it built? Oh, no. I'd love to have the skills, mad skills to build a house. Okay. Like, I don't know how to build a house, but we'd like to have someone help us build a house. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. 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 So like what, what does that help? And to have a view and to decide what you want and build it. Nothing elaborate. Okay. We're not. What does you know, the house look like? What does it look like? It, it, it looks like it has a, it's white. It has a porch. It has windows. It's one store. It's a ranch. It's a modern ranch. It overlooks a valley with a river. Here in Oregon. Pretty simple. Okay. Pretty simple house. How, 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 how big are the guest rooms? <laughs> Before you come in? I, I've always made the joke that when I actually build my next house, it's going to have really, there'll be quite a few guest rooms and they'll be very cozy, but not comfortable. That means people can come out and hey, I love have visitors all the time, but they won't, they won't be comfortable enough to stay very long. <laughs> yeah, two days is good, right? They always say. Two days. Yeah. Maybe three. In a perfect world, a guest house is great if you can do it. Oh, a guest house. Well, like that, a tiny? That, yeah, but see, then the, the guest house still, to me, almost in puts that whole point of, well, okay, they're out in the guest house, so I guess I can't run around my house naked with the windows open. <laughs> that way you would say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great goal. That's a great goal. So any, any, any parting thoughts? Any, I mean, there's so much more you and I could talk about, and it's really not fair. I want to share you with everybody, but is there anything you could share with all of us? You know, the best, the executives that I, you know, working at Humana, um, you know, which is national, it's actually, it's done some, inter they've been done international work. I had the pleasure of working there for several years. Their leaders and the leaders that I've seen at the companies that I've worked with that were extraordinary had mad public speaking skills. They could, you know, walk the floor, work an audience. They were phenomenal at public speaking. I spent a couple years in Toastmasters, uh, and I, it's not a skill. I, I think that you, I think you have to keep it up. And I probably should go back to, again. But 
public speaking, if there's one thing around executive presence that I think is the most important and probably has been the most challenging for me um, is public speaking. Okay. So, and I, and I, you know, my folks that reported to me, I had hundreds of folks under me at one time and I, and I had lots of national conference calls. So I got lots of practice in public speaking, but public speaking was always my suggestion. If you want one skill that's going to propel you in your career, it's going to, and I'm sure you would agree. 100%. Yeah. I mean, 100%. you're great at it. I'm sure oh, you would agree. Stop it. Uh, would you agree? Wouldn't you agree with that? Like, if oh. you were going to give someone, if you had to say one thing, public speaking? Absolutely. Because I, I tell people, you know, the thing I, I learned a long time ago, it, it doesn't matter what you know. If you can't communicate it to people, what good is it? <laughs> I, it doesn't matter what you know. If you can't communicate it to people, what good is it? Yeah. That's, That's a money great. Quote. You can have it. I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write that down. Okay. <laughs> well, here's my favorite quote in closing, and, and it's Wayne Gretzky. It's on my website. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Love that one. That's what. That's a good one, too. I live by it. Yeah. That's a good you one. miss 100% of the shots you don't take. I love that one. So yeah. how can we help you? How, how, what's the best way to get to you? How do we contact you? Obviously, what's the best way to get a hold of you is one. My website is idgexecutiveadvisors.com. Okay. My email is IDG, it's Ivy at IDG executive advisors.com. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll put the uh, folks, I'll put all that information in the comments yeah. of the video. So you'll have it there too. Uh, any way we could, anybody in particular you want help with referring us to or referring you to? I mean, any specific. You know, I really like working with emerging executives a lot. Okay. I have, I have one person that I'm working with right now. And it's a joy. It's it's really fun for me. The ones that just now put their executive shoes on and are test driving it. Yeah. Those are it's fun, fun. Aren't they? It's fun. And uh, so I do. And I think it, you know, I had an executive coach. That's how I got in this. I had an executive coach. It was worth it every penny. The learnings were extraordinary. And the investment in your career, you, it, it, you get it back tenfold. Absolutely. So there's things that you can't, you know, I mean... I, I, I used it. I advocate it. So, yeah. Fabulous. Okay. Well, I will make sure that we get a hold of you somehow. Folks, definitely reach out to Ivy. Uh, just don't take my word for it. You've got to take her for a test drive. I'll make sure you get information on how to get a hold of her, how to book her, and learn from this woman. She's very talented and very easily um, understood, very approachable. Oh, yeah. Very, very human. Very humanizing. Trying to find humanizing? The right word. Am I humanizing? No, it's not humanizing. That's not the word I'm looking for. Um, approachable. I, I want to find a new word for you. You're very um, interactive. Oh, that's too generic, too. You are super super califragilistic expialidocious. That's what you are. Thank you. Ivy is great for just about anybody that you guys can get a hold of her. But that like actually said. Emerging executives are going to be fantastic for her. So if you are one or you know one, please reach out to her. Her information is in the comments. I'll make sure again that you have it. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, that'll also be in the comments. This wasn't too painful, was this? It's fabulous. I loved it. Yeah. I loved it. Thank you for oh. having me on. It was great. You bet all we need is a couple of glasses of wine and we'd be just like sitting there hang hanging out. Yeah, no, it's great. Anytime. <laughs> all right. Any well, subject. Thank Love it. Thanks again for joining me. Say goodbye. Bill, I'm in the mood for a change up. I leave the city and return with my change up. They got amnesia, don't remember how they played us. They want to knock me down, but somehow I just stay up. Straight to the stage, they love me. love me I understand they hungry But please don't hate, that's ugly I have been sliding, shaking, moving I been popping in my city Shawty say she love the way we do it Do it with me I be too turned up to ever give a I ain't come to argue, let a Please, baby They been talking pennies, I need bigger bucks About to catch a flight, I need to switch it up Got that black boy joy, might do my dance on me Take no disrespect